Hey guys, Matt Allen, Tim Little, welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today we are talking crankbaits, we are doing another buyer's guide. Uh, what we are going to do tonight, we are taking deep cranks from the giant oversized cranks to your mid, your mid divers, everywhere in between. Uh, we've narrowed it down kind of. to 15 baits. Uh, for those of you that have stuck with us for a long time, you know that we're both crankbait junkies. It was hard to cut it down to 15. But for the sake of a buyer's guide, because the whole purpose of these is to simplify things, to save you guys money, to make it easy for you to make purchase decisions, for your loved ones to make purchase decisions going into the holidays, live with you, we're gonna trim it from 15 to eight. We're gonna go one by one, each pick baits until we've picked our top eight out of that. Uh, that's not going to be easy, <laughs> nope. but let's do it. Yeah, these are all winners. So these are these are crankbaits right out of our boxes that we throw on a regular basis. So this is going to be kind of hard to cut it in half realistically. Yeah. But uh, the baits I think that we come up with will cover everybody that's just getting into crankbait fishing to uh, guys that prefer it over many other techniques. So yeah. uh, you want me to start off? Or you want to go? Um, I'm going to go first. And I'm going to go with the Deepex 300. Mega Bass Deepex 300, uh, arguably one of my absolute favorite crankbaits. Uh, produces giant fish. My largest smallmouth that I caught this year, I caught with you guys, uh, was on that bait right there. Uh, big smallmouth, big largemouth. It's a winner. Uh, it's a very refined bait. You can, it falls into a category that I like to refer to as finesse cranking. Uh, going to lighter line, lighter tackle, lighter hooks. Uh, and then you can, you can be aggressive with it if you want, but you don't have to be. You can really baby those finessier crankbaits uh, and just get very different actions out of them. And it's very, very effective. That's going to be my number one. I'm going to go with the striking the 10 XD. <laughs> now I've grown to love this bait. This bait came out a couple years ago and really kind of revolutionized uh, crankbait fishing. It got that reaction type action down to depths that uh, wasn't really seen before. So this yeah. was putting a lot of big fish in the boat early on, still producing big fish. Uh, it's a little harder to throw. You need bigger gear. And it's a little tough on the elbow and the shoulders throughout the day. Mm -hmm. But if you want to get a big crankbait down to those 25 foot depths, uh, the 10XD right there. It's, uh, I've caught a lot of big ones on it. It's, it's one of my favorites. <laughs> the irony is, is as hard as it is for us to go from 15 to 8, we could probably each peg which ones <laughs> the other one is going to pick out. Yeah. Uh, based on what they've caught on those baits. Yeah, as I'm looking at these, I'm trying to, you know, trying to rank them. I'm just having flashbacks of different fish catches and stuff. Both Matt and I have had. I'm like, all right, which one he gonna pick? Which one I'm gonna pick? I caught this one on that. It's just, uh, it's hard to simplify when you have so much history with all these baits. Right. I am gonna go six XD. Strike King six XD, much like the ten XD. Uh, it's a very simple bait to fish. It is, it's a do everything bait. Uh, summertime, throw the rattling version and crank that thing just as hard as you can crank. Bang into cover. Wintertime, go to the silent version, slow it down, pick your way through cover. But it is just a do everything, catch everything, easy to fish bait. Uh, natural choice. Yeah, that's that was going to be my next choice, so thanks for that. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, I'm going to switch it up, and I will go with... Uh, oh, that's so tough. <laughs> I'm going to go with the Norman, the DD-22. I've talked about this in previous videos. Fairly inexpensive in, in regards to some of these, these crankbaits. Mm -hmm. uh, easy on the wallet, very easy to fish. It, it runs... 16 to 17 feet typically 
Um, but again, very easy to fish, comes in great colors. It's been catching fish in winter tournaments out here so for a long, great. long time, as far as I can remember. The DD20 by, DD22 by Norman is a great choice. Another alternative is the DD14, just a little bit different depths. But I'm gonna go with that guy right there, the DD22. All right, all right, number three. I'm going. <laughs> River to Sea. That guy right there is such a unique bait. Uh, a lot of you guys have heard me talk about the goon before, but some of you haven't. So I'm going to give you the, the brief version. I just said that the 6XD is, is probably the easiest bait to fish because you just fish it. You just throw it out and reel it back. The Goon is probably the most complicated of all of the cranks that I fish, but it is a very, very special bait. And if you learn how to fish it, you can do some things with it that you literally cannot do with any other bait on the table. Uh, the Goon has an incredibly steep dive angle. It dives very hard when you reel it. Because it's diving so hard, normally when a crankbait hits a piece of cover, it just kind of bounces off and keeps going. The goon has a tendency when it hits, whichever direction it turns, it just continues diving. So once you bump it sideways, it takes off sideways. And when you first start throwing this bait, you think that it's not tuned right. You think that you've got it messed up because all of a sudden it's just shooting off to the left or shooting off to the right or jumping up in the water column. But what's really happening is when it deflects, it's just traveling in that same direction. What I've discovered is that when it starts to do that, if you pause, and I just mean a fraction of a second, just a break in cadence, that that bait will right itself and start tracking true again. What that means to you is that you've got a bait where a normal crankbait will come in and deflect and bounce, but it's traveling in a straight line. This is a bait that will come in, bump, and you can have it run two feet, four feet, 10 feet to the side, and then when you're ready, you straighten it up and it tracks straight again. You've got a bait that will literally hunt farther left and right than any other bait in your box. And when you learn how to use that to bump into a rock and it starts cutting to the right and you let it go seven or eight feet and then break loose, and then start running and then bump and it goes four or five feet left. A bait that will just move all over the place is not a bait that fish have seen. It's a little bit harder to fish with until you've got the feel for it. But when you've got the feel for it, that's a special bait. That one makes the cut. Oh, shoot. Um, I think I'm going to go with... Uh, I'm gonna go with the Mega Bass, the Deep Six. This is, uh, like Matt said with the other Mega Bass, the, the 300, this is uh, almost like a finesse crankbait. Mm -hmm. Lighter line, lighter rod, lighter hooks. It's a real finesse bait. It's got a real tight wobble. And, um, you know, Mega Bass as a whole just has everything kind of tuned very well. And the Deep Six, the, deep, the, the 300 are both phenomenal baits. This one gets down a little bit deeper, has a little bit smaller profile, I think, than the, the 300. But the, the Megabass, the Deep Six, this is one of my wintertime finesse crankbaits. Mm -hmm. All right, now we're down to brass tacks. This is my last choice. Oof. Um, <laughs> it's tough. Man, there were good catches on a bunch of these this year. Right. I... I'm going to go with this one right here. Man, you're <laughs> killing me. This little guy right here, the 3XD, my eyes really opened to this one uh, this year when Matt and I took a trip down south to Arizona and we were mm -hmm. fishing a lot of uh, submerged bushes and we were catching them on you know, flipping baits and pitching baits and drop shots and stuff, but it wasn't until we really picked up the crankbaits that we started catching big ones. And I think Matt's first cast on this little guy right here was a seven and a half. And it really <laughs> opened my eyes because I throw square bills. I throw square bills a lot. It's one of my favorite things to do. Got a little bit different action than a traditional round uh, bill on a crankbait. So this little guy right here, it's got that same pro, that same bill profile as your bigger crankbaits. And it's diving the same depths 
as a square bill. So it's got a little bit different action and obviously is a, a fish producing uh, crankbait. Again, first cast, seven and a half, light bulb went off my head and uh, I really learned and fell in love with this little guy right here. Well, I was 50-50 on what my last choice was going to be. I knew so that that's why I took it, yeah. I'm going to go with the rock crawler. The rock crawler, again, is a unique bait. Uh, they've done a great job with this. What I, I think what I like most about the rock crawler, it's a, it's a great bait year-round. Shines for me fall through spring, but it's a great bait year-round. Uh, but what I really, really like about the rock crawler is that they didn't neglect the craw colors. Uh, a lot of crankbaits will produce a ton of your bait and fish colors and then throw in a craw color. Uh, but rock crawler did a great job of building, well, Spro, not rock crawler. Spro did a great, drop, great job of building the rock crawler in a bunch of craw colors, uh, which is something that I really, really like. I love throwing those deep reds and oranges and browns and Greens. olives. Uh, and you don't get that from a lot of different baits. So that's one that's got to make the cut. Yeah, uh, it kind of only ha it kind of has that wiggle wart kind of. Yes. That's, that's what kind of what it reminds me of. That's exactly. It's playing in that exact same category as the wiggle wart. Uh, with that, we wrap that up. I mean, that's... We really, we did it. It's hard. It's, it it is really hard. is hard. So we'll, down below in the video description, we'll link all these baits we just talked about. And then down below, we'll, we'll link the others that didn't quite make the cut. But uh, if you guys have some of these, you could branch off and try some of those. But uh, you want to talk about rods? Sure. Uh, I think for the sake of time, we'll keep the rods simple. Uh, realistically, you could throw every single bait on this table on two rods. Uh a bigger rod and a smaller rod is going to cover the two halves of the spectrum if they're the right rods. We will link you the exact combos that we would use literally to throw all of these. Uh, and then because we know that some of you guys are very, very brand specific, we will also link you models, a single model from a handful of brands that would fit those categories as well. Uh, but I think we probably both agree that between an 805 and a CBR 845, you could throw all of them. A lot yeah. Of these. yeah. So we'll we'll link that down below for you guys and just keep it really simple. Yeah, same with reels. We'll do, we'll do the same thing with reels. You know, one thing you want to be cognizant of, it is, is wintertime right now, so you typically want to throw lower gear ratio reels, kind of slower, slower baits, but we'll link some of our favorite high-speed burners as well, line, rod, reels. We'll leave it all down there. Also, we just got a fresh batch of hoodies and hats in. So if you guys are looking for Christmas gifts for your loved ones or yourself, shoot us an email. We'll leave the link down below in the video description for that as well. And Tanya will get those sent out ASAP. But uh, there it is, guys. There is a quick, hard to do buyer's <laughs> guide for deep cranks. And uh, hopefully you guys sensed it. It was kind of like, you know, which one do we pick? Because it, it really is. You know, we've had so much experience with all these. We have fish stories for all of them, fish catches with all of them. So mm -hmm. um, hopefully that simplified it for you. But if you have any questions, please leave those down in the comments section. We'll try and get to those. We appreciate you guys. We will talk to you soon. Thanks, guys.